Focus groups. Focus groups have been used for a long time, mostly in market research, but have now become an accepted part of social research. Most textbooks and practitioners recommend that groups should be no larger than 12 to 15 people. One potential problem is what to do if only a few people turn up. Perhaps you're invited 10, but on the day you only get three. The advice is to go ahead anyway. There is no hard and fast rule here, and at least you will get some data. At first sight, focus groups may appear to be a good way of interviewing lots of people quicker and cheaper than with one-to-one -one interviews. However, this is not really the case as the data gathered is about group interaction as much as the topic under discussion. As such, the analysis needs to pay attention to the forms of interaction that take place within the group. This is one of the biggest misunderstandings about focus groups and can even be found in some method textbooks. It simply is not the case as a focus group involves a group discussion on certain topics. The main purpose of focus group research is to draw upon respondents' attitudes, feelings, beliefs, experiences and reactions in a way in which would not be feasible using other methods. These attitudes, feelings and beliefs are more likely to be revealed via the social gathering and the interaction which being in a focus group entails. Compared to individual interviews, focus groups elicit a multiplicity of views and emotional processes within a group context. In a one-to-one -one interview, the interviewer will ask the interviewee to explain certain thoughts and actions. In focus groups, it's often the participants themselves who will often ask each other to explain certain actions or thoughts. Focus groups allow us to study the ways in which individuals make sense of particular topics and construct social meanings around it. Interaction is a key element, so as well as listening, you also have to observe. The type of group chosen will depend entirely on the research question and the kind of data you will need to answer your research question. We can identify three types of groups. Pre-existing, where the participants already know each other and have some collective identity, such as a club or organisation. A disadvantage of using established groups in this way is that you may have an already established hierarchy. A common interest group is where the participants share a common set of interests or concerns, but they may not know each other in advance. And stratified, where the participants are selected to provide a mix, for example by gender or age. In both stratified and common interest focus groups, a disadvantage of using people who don't know each other is that people might be wary of speaking out. There are many uses of focus groups. It can be used as a scoping exercise to develop ideas, interview schedules or hypotheses for further research. It can be used as a standalone method of data collection. Using focus groups, individuals are valued as experts and given the chance to work collaboratively with researchers, for example, in the planning process. Focus groups can be empowering for many participants. If a group works well, trust develops and the group may explore solutions to a particular problem as a unit rather than as individuals. Data gained is less likely to be as personal as that gained in the one-to-one -one interview and focus groups can be open to bias by the selection of participants. In focus groups, dominant individuals in a group may dominate discussion. Group responses may vary according to group dynamics and makeup. And focus groups need to be well managed and the moderators or facilitators need to keep the discussion under control. Unlike interviews, participants' views may be challenged, not by the moderators, but by other members of the group. Focus groups allow us to see the processes that are involved in meaning construction within groups. If two facilitators are involved, it is usual for one to ask the questions and help the discussion along, rather like chairing a meeting, whilst the other observes who is interacting with whom. Maintaining confidentiality can be a problem. While the researcher can ensure that they will keep the responses confidential, they cannot guarantee that the participants will. There are also a number of practical issues to consider. Focus groups require adequate planning and resources. You need a venue that is fit for purpose with adequate room and comfortable seating. Focus groups are not cheap to organise and run as they include the hidden costs of time spent arranging them, finding a venue and so on. Inviting people may require a lot of phone calls and planning. 
as you are asking people to leave their homes to attend, you need some incentive for them to attend, such as food or drink, or travel expenses, or a gift voucher as form of payment. It's recommended to have two facilitators or moderators, one to ask the questions and the other to observe. And it's always good to have high quality recording equipment, especially a good quality external stereo microphone. Videoing focus groups may help, but raises a number of problems, such as technical issues regarding adequate lighting and the number of cameras you would need to ensure everything was adequately recorded. Videos also raise a number of ethical issues in relation to confidentiality and anonymity. Focus group recordings are time consuming to transcribe, more so than individual interviews, as you have to identify each individual speaker, but with video recording you could more easily identify the speakers. In summary, like interviews, focus groups offer us the chance to investigate meanings and motivations, to ask why, what and how questions. The data you get is more likely to reveal group consensus rather than a collection of different views. But they do require a high level of resources and can be time consuming to organise and analyse.